Maybe it's to avoid uncomfortable silence, but after I play a concert, if someone asks me to autograph their CD, they'll usually offer a thought or two as I sign. The audience favorite seems to be, You know, you look like you just came from your bar mitzvah. The first time I heard this, I thought it was cute, like a child describing a French kiss. The 61st time I heard this, it was less cute, like my mother describing a French kiss. It's not that I'm in denial about my face, I just don't need a constant reminder that I look young for my age, and maybe just a little like the poster boy for Nazi propaganda. But not everyone comments on my appearance. Some people share musical observations. After one concert, a woman remarked, You know, I didn't think I'd enjoy your show. I mean, normally, I don't really care for elevator music. Following a performance I played with the jazz singers Annie Ross and John Hendricks, a gentleman came up to me. Son, that was the best country fiddling I'd heard in a long time. But you also play jazz on that violin? And then there are the people who want to get personal. They're usually older women. Approaching me with a warm smile, an elderly lady might ask, Are you married? Because, oh, do I have the girl for you. My granddaughter is, well, you just have to meet her and she'd think you're just darling. The grandmother will then explain why her granddaughter will think I'm just darling. You're so entertaining and funny and oh, just so adorable with your cute little bow tie. If only the grandmother considered her description entertaining, funny, bow tie, she might realize that she'd essentially painted me as the quintessential Borscht Belt comic, which I have no problem with. I just can't imagine a 20-something granddaughter for whom thoughts of Shecky Green and Henny Youngman send romantic shivers. What I can imagine is that the idea of someone like me, a young man who plays Gershwin songs wearing a suit and bow tie, might fulfill an unspeakable sexual fantasy for a certain geriatric set. But I never really developed a taste for three o'clock dinners or the whole wearing the waist of your pants as a necklace look. So long before I wake up with dentures on my bedside table, I politely end the conversation, and the ladies usually take the hint. But after a concert in Scarsdale, I met a woman of a more determined ilk. You need to meet my granddaughter. You'd love her. She's a musician. Well, actually, that's a deal breaker. But she's a great musician. Probably even better than you. That's a real deal breaker. But she's smart. Brilliant, in fact. See, she's not just a musician. She's also a physicist. Not just a musician. I seldom hear people say things like, he's not just a heart surgeon, he's also a carpenter, but poor Yo-Yo Ma, just a musician. And I just wanted to get away from this woman. I smiled, shook her hand and said, I can see you love your granddaughter very much and thank you for coming to the show. I made my way through the post-concert reception. While talking with some patrons, the woman reappeared Stepping between me and the people with whom I was speaking, she said, But my granddaughter, she's beautiful, gorgeous. And her last name is Weinstein. Just like you, just like me, it's a sign. Weinstein and Weinstein. It sounds like a law firm. Um, Mrs. Weinstein. Aaron, my granddaughter, she will keep you busy all night. I mean, all night. I began inching away. I'm sure your granddaughter is terrific. And again, thank you for coming to the concert. I was on neighborhood watch while continuing through the room, but I momentarily let down my guard while taking a cracker from the cheese plate. It was then that Mrs. Weinstein sidled over to me, cupped her hands around her mouth and whispered in my ear, My granddaughter, she gives great head. I stepped back, nearly tripping over a man's walker. Gazing at Mrs. Weinstein, a devilish grin spread across her face. I asked what any rational person would. Mrs. Weinstein, how do you know that? Well, she takes after her grandmother. As Mrs. Weinstein slithered away, a man approached me and asked if I would sign the CD he just purchased. While inscribing the disc, he said, I don't know if anyone's told you this, but you look like you came here straight from your bar mitzvah. It was the first time in years that the comment didn't bother me, and yet I couldn't fully enjoy it. Maybe I was just too preoccupied with the image of Mrs. Weinstein and her granddaughter at Shabbat dinner, comparing notes on kosher meat in between bites of kosher meat. It was orthodox meets reform, fiddler on the roof meets deep throat. It was indeed 
a Kodach moment.